<laughs> I love you. You know what's funny is um, I post a lot of pictures of me doing this because when I, when I go to take a picture, a selfie, I just look at it and I look at myself and then I see like empty space right here and I'm like, oh, what can I fill that space with? I mean, those rocks are beautiful right now, but it's like, it just seems like it's missing something. Then it's like, oh, I love you. <laughs> Fill empty space with love. That's what I like to do. <laughs> and I get to judge, judge. I get to judge, I get to decide what love is. Try saying that. Try saying that. In fact, I, I challenge you very gently. I invite you. I invite you to say that. Why not? Okay, why not? Just try it. I get to decide what love is for my own life. I get to decide what love is. <sighs> Feels powerful. And it also feels very freeing. So it feels really light too. And that is the ultimate form of power is freedom. Freedom and power. So a lot of questions that I get from people, you know, can you talk about how not to get manipulated by others, how to deal with other people who hurt me, how to deal with people who are um, aggressive, who don't respect my boundaries. So what I, when I feel into that, you know, lots of different topics and words, and for those of you who are with me regularly, you, you notice that when I ask for topics, I get lots and lots and lots of responses and all different kind of topics, but what I do is I feel into the energy of it. So I read it all in, I take it in, and I just sit in silence. Right before I picked up the camera here, I was just sitting in silence. And then it comes up in me like, okay, yep, yeah, I feel people are feeling pushed on. People are feeling victimized. People are feeling like other human beings in their lives are causing their unrest and their unhappiness. Okay, and I feel that. I've been there. But can you feel into that how it's all this sense of like, oh, something outside me is pushing on me and how do I deal with that? Which really what that, how do I deal with that means? How do I make that go away? How do I change that? How do I affect that? And so think of like yourself, you're in your being, you're centered, you're here with yourself. And then if you're imagining that things outside of you that are coming at you, you know, people and their energy and their judgments, their opinions of you. And ultimately what it is, guys, it's all a battle over what does love mean? What's love got to do, got to do with it? What's love but a second-hand emotion? So not true, Tina. <laughs> Tina Turner. What's love got to do with it? Love is not a second-hand emotion. Love is what we say that it is. But what happens is that within human being circles that we exist in, see, we want to be connected with other people because it makes us feel safe. It makes us feel good to laugh with other people and to connect and to hear about their ideas and their opinions because it brings newness, newness. If we lived alone, you know, sure, we could make do. We could be happy being alone. I spend most of my time alone, but then you know what? When I get together with my friend Paul or my friend Kelly or my friend Allegra, I don't know, I'm just picking names. But we have fun, we dance. You know, I love to dance by myself, I do. I'm in my kitchen, you know, I'm, getting my meal ready and I'm just mm -mm, listening to some Lil Wayne or something. <laughs> or last night I was listening to Capital Cities. I love that one song that they had. It's, um, I can lift you up in a tidal wave of mystery. I still be put up. I don't even remember the words, but it's safe and sound. I just love putting that on and the keyboard sound in that song. That, ooh, it creates this really nice foundation of just grooving and just feeling good, safe and sound. We're safe and sound, I mean, that's it, right? Everyone wants to feel safe and sound and have fun with other people. So we love to connect with other people, okay? But, and this is the human experience, 
is when other people, you know, when the dancing's done and someone says, hey, I'm going to bed. Come on to bed. And you say, well, I'm, I'm still having fun with them or, you know, I'm going to sit here and quiet or read a book or something like that. I say, well, I, I want to go to bed. Can you feel that? Others' expectations? Oh, we were having fun and we were connected and we were free and now, oh, but not, now you, you want me to go to bed now. Ah, and see, there's always this decision that we're making and we make it unconsciously. And that's what I always say that I do is I'm here as a guide just to help bring things into conscious awareness, just to kind of get you to pause, get you to ponder, take what you will. So we're always making that decision, like in this circumstance. Well, I don't want to lose the good stuff because I love the dancing and I love the feeling of safety of having that partner, having that friend. I love when we do stuff together and we laugh. We have all those things that we connect on. We love the same music. We, um, you know, it's just, I don't know, it just feels good to live with someone else. So when those expectations come on us, where someone kind of really puts us in a position of choice, which is, hey, do what I want you to do, or else I'm gonna withdraw my love from you. And I use the word love to mean acceptance, um, feeling of being okay. I'm gonna withdraw, I'm gonna judge you. See, that's what it is. It's, it's do what I want you to do or I'm gonna judge you as bad or as unloving or as not worthy of, of the good stuff. And when we're faced with that, it's like, whoa, okay, wow, so that's, it feels so wrong to be judged. Because when you're existing freely, it's your natural state, right? Just to be yourself. And then all of a sudden there's this pressure of like, hey, you know, something that you're connected to, a loved one, family member, spouse, boyfriend, girlfriend, friend. And then all of a sudden, you know, there's this nice connection. It's like, hey, I like you and you like me. And we spend time together because we like to. We're, we're freely choosing this. That's what dating is. Dating's like, hey, I'm free. I'm single. I could spend all my time by myself if I wanted to. But guess what? I really would like to spend time with someone else who makes me laugh and who, whose skin I like to smell and touch and who I like to kiss with because kiss, kissing feels great. Oh my gosh. When lips come together, you, someone's breath and someone's scent, and then you look into their eyes, and oh my gosh, it feels so good. We call that love, right? We call lots of things love. <laughs> mm, and sex. <laughs> Whoa. Woo, hot topic there, because you know why it's so hot is because it's so good. <laughs> it's so good. Oh my gosh, as human beings, it is the most awesome act of intimacy that we can find in this human experience in terms of engaging with another person. I mean, it's even good when you do it with yourself, right? That's how good it is. But it's always better with two or more, <laughs> depending on what your particular persuasion is. And of course, sex is always best when it's free because sex is really just a reflection of your state of freedom. So if you want to know how free you are, if you really want to be honest with yourself, you say, how's my sex? Because sex is good, you know, even if you're with someone that you don't even really connect with, they don't even really know, but you just like the way their body looks. It's like, oh, okay, yeah, let's have sex. So you have sex, but whoa, it's so powerful. And it pulls both people in this deep space of intimacy. And then it's like, oh, we might have kind of just been doing this because we liked each other's bodies, but guess what? Now here we are in relationship. Oh, and then all of our discomfort comes up and expectations from the other person and our expectations on them. Woo, it's a wild ride. And then people start to say, oh, maybe we shouldn't have done that. Maybe that was a mistake. Maybe we shouldn't have sex unless, you know, we love someone. But to see where that goes, right back to that question that I had earlier on, which is, who in your life is deciding what love is? And what I'm here to suggest is that only you, for you, can decide what love is. And you can stand firm in that. Say, I, dec I decide what love is. 
And love generally exists for me. I know it when I feel it. See, we got to get out of this mindset. Our culture runs on this. Oh, you know it when you see it. Okay, Do you, can, you, can you feel that? People say, oh, that's not loving. Oh, that's not loving. Oh, that's not love. If anyone shows any bit of anger, like if someone's like, hey, like this facial expression or any energy of like, hey, people are like, oh, that's not loving. That can't be love. That can't be enlightenment because it doesn't look like Jesus with the lamb around his neck. It doesn't look like Buddha sitting there all with his little smile on. It doesn't look like Muhammad because those people look blissful and peaceful and happy and they talk about peace and you know, so love must mean peace. But how do we get peace? Okay, imagine if someone was attacking you, grabbing you, trying to get you into their car and you don't know who they are, what they're doing, but you just know someone, another human being is trying to apprehend you, trying to take you they're restricting your freedom. You don't want this at all. This violates every cell in your body. And they're just about to get you into a car. And you know that once they get you into the car and they start driving, guess what? They are in the driver's seat, literally. How scary. And then imagine me coming along right when they're getting you into the car. And I say, hey, and I grab that guy. And I look him right in the eye and I say, hey, I see what you're doing. And it is not cool at all, at all. Get in the driver's seat. She's coming with me. And never show your face around here again until you can come back and look into these eyes and own what you've done here and tell me about how wrong it was and tell me about how you will never do it again and I get to judge whether I believe it or not. Until then, do not show your face around this part, these parts. Don't show your face around these parts. So then the, oh, so that guy gets in the car and drives away and then here you are. And it doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman, you know, I'm kind of using a woman in, in, in the analogy. Imagine then you turn to me, you're just having this, this horrendous moment of abduction. I mean, you know, rape for all intents and purposes, even though it didn't involve you know, physical penetration in that way. I mean, it was physical penetration. It was penetrating your physical experience with aggression, with, hmm, okay? And imagine then you look into my eyes and I'm right there. What do you feel? So all of that aggression and all of that, mm, oh, and that force, that force. Is it love? Is it? In your world, in that moment. If we're looking into each other's eyes and I say, hey, you know, all that just happened there. Did you experience that as love? Would you feel comfortable putting the label of love onto that? Onto my actions, onto my energy, onto my word choice? If I put myself in the shoes of the abductee, the person who's getting taken, you know, and maybe horrible things would happen to me if I got taken. Lots of pain and oh, all the, oh my gosh, loss of my life, loss of my connection with all my loved ones potentially. And I would say, absolutely, that was love of the highest form because you didn't even have to do that. You could have just walked on by like so many people do. Oh, it's none of my business. Oh, maybe she needs to learn a lesson there. Maybe he needs to learn a lesson there. Oh, that person who's taking that other person, that person was probably wronged in some way. Oh, it's just for whatever reason. So many people find a reason to not act. Okay? <laughs> so who's acting in your life?
Most people exist in a state of fear and their choices are dictated by, I don't want to upset other people. I don't want to lose connection. I don't want to be judged. See, we, none of us want to be judged as unloving or mean or unkind or bad or we don't want to, when people withdraw their attention and their favor away from us, when they go from, oh, look at that curiosity and oh, I like this to like, mm-mm, no, that, no, I'm walking away. Oh, that disrupts us because then it's like, oh, whoa. You know, I, I love that person so much and I, I value what they think. I value like their opinion and now their opinion is that I'm, I'm not okay and I'm, I'm, um, I'm not loving and I'm not good and oh no, oh, and that pulls on us. Okay, but at the end of the day, guys, and this is what this guy always talks about, all that is really, it's not about the other people. Okay, if something bothers us, when I say bother, I mean it disrupts us, takes away our state of peace, makes us feel anxiety, makes us feel guilt, makes us feel unrest, makes us feel like we need to change something. <sighs> okay, it's always going to be brought to us. So the particular people, the particular circumstances, really the boss, the boyfriend, you know, if we stay focused on them, you know, how do we deal with these manipulative people? <laughs> Guess what? No one can manipulate us unless we allow them to, except in the example that I use physically. If someone physically overpowers us, we have no, nothing we can do. That's why it's such a powerful example because when someone comes in to rescue us, Ooh, we're so thankful for that person that they chose to act on what they decided was right. Okay, so let's let go of this idea that there's some right and wrong that everyone should know. And then we fight over it. And you know, this is loving, this isn't loving. No, this, that's, that can't be loving, that can't be kind. No, 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 no. Each person decides for themselves. You decide for yourself. What is loving? What is kind? What is right or what is wrong? In my world, when I see someone getting abducted, I'm the guy who goes up and does that and says, hey, 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 no, get your hands off of her. Okay, you are a good person because everyone is, but the choices you're making right now are horrible. Okay, and that's why I even use the F word because that energy of the F word because it's, it, it does something to people. It means something. That's why it's so powerful. Okay, because we've made it taboo to use the F word. Okay, but that, that only gives it more power. The more taboo it is by mainstream, the more powerful it is. And the F word has actually been taken over by the C word. <laughs> I've done a little bit of, you know, and this is my opinion. And again, see, I live from a place where it's like what feels right to me, what feels true to me is what I live. And yeah, other people can have their opinions and I'll listen to them. I'll hear them. I'll consider them. But at the end of the day, I decide for me what is true and what is real. And I live from that. And I'm inviting you to join me in that. And so what I'm saying is I felt into it. I've asked people, hey, what word do you think is the one that when people say it, it's like, oh, it like causes the most discomfort. And people say it's the C word, the F word. It's been used so much in movies and, you know, we use it, use it, use it. And it's powerful. And it represents sex, which is really powerful. Okay. But now that word has been overtaken in American society. Okay. And I'm speaking as an American, but the C word. Okay, and if you don't know what it is, <laughs> ask somebody uh, because people know what it is. And I'm just deal. I'm, I'm noticing like, okay, I'm asking myself the question, well, why am I not just saying it here on this video? And I'm just tuning in. Like I go into a little bit of silence and I just feel into it. Does it feel right to say the word? That's intuition, okay? Intuition is when you want to make a yes or no choice, you know, this way or that way, yes, no. You feel into it and you feel into the yes and you feel into the no. You know, imagine yourself doing it. And right now it just feels so good to not do it. I could, I'm completely free. I'm so completely free. <laughs> and so are you. And that's my message. You decide what love is in your life. You decide. Okay, other people's judgments are just that. They're just opinions. Like if somebody, you know, it's like sports is such a perfect like analogy, you know, people get all into it. You know, the Cavaliers are the best. The, no, the Warriors are the best. LeBron's the best. Da, da, da. You know, they fight, fight, fight. Everyone knows it's just your opinion. You know, I mean, the scoreboard shows the results and that's why people love sports because the person who had the opinion that LeBron's the best, well, guess what? If he scores 40 points and they win the championship, 
then it's like, ha ha, um, I was right. And the people love sports, especially men. You know, they like love to have strong opinions and then be able to point to something tangible to say, I was right. Okay, but what we do in this tribe is we live from integrity, which means being true to ourselves and knowing we decide what's right for us. And we're always open to changing. We're always open to changing because we're always evolving. Okay, that's kind of the core of this culture is that there's nothing rigid here. The only thing that's rigid here is, hey, I decide for me what is right and your judgments are just that. And if your judgments carry an energy of I should be different or I don't love you unless you act the way that I want you to, well, I know specifically then that that's not the energy that I want to spend my time around. And the, <laughs> so I'm not, I'm not going to judge you as, as not deserving of love and acceptance, but I'm not gonna want you into my quiet room if that's your energy. Can you see the difference there? People get caught up in this mind thing of, uh, you know, well, if someone's judging me and I get upset and then I'm not liking them, and aren't I just judging back? And eh, you know, wh wh it's like this chicken and an egg thing. And it's, people get into these spiritual mindsets and they just get, it, it drives people crazy. I was in it for a while myself. And it serves, it does serve, because ultimately everything comes out of the fire, you know, but you get into these mind traps and it, you can get stuck in there for a while. And part of what I do is just speak my truth and I know that it helps people come out of that. So maybe you're one of those people who's just, you know, you're not sure what ground to stand on. If somebody's upset with me, does that mean that they're right? Do I have to listen to them? And I was talking with my friend Allie the other night and she was, she's really in that, you know, she, she, she's so courageous and open hearted, but, but she's in a, a mental program where anytime anyone says anything to her, like they're judging her or attacking her, she wants to learn and wants to grow. So she's like, oh, well, maybe they're right. And you know, what part should I take in? What part shouldn't I take in? You know, what's in this for me? What's in it for them? And what happens is you lose your reference point. And when you've lost your reference point, life becomes very stressful difficult and then love like what most of us would call love which is just a feeling of like oh my gosh whoa like good feelings of like yeah I don't know what else to call this so I'll call it love but that starts to go away when we've lost our reference point and so it begs the question right what's the reference point you are the reference point for you what feels right in your very core when you get in silence and you just feel you feel and you just kind of know, you know, for me, this is right. And what you need to let go of, if, if it feels right, I <laughs> see that you don't need to do it. I'm inviting you to do it is this idea that if it feels right to you, feels wrong to you, that that means that that's for everybody. And then that's what we, you know, religion and judgment is in, in our society exists like, oh, there's a right way and there's a wrong way. And if you do the wrong way, you go to jail or, you know, you won't succeed or this and this and this. And so each person is their own, you know, entity, their own fountain of truth for them. And when we own that and recognize the same divinity in others or the same essence in others, that's when things start to get really good because you can't have your own freedom, your fountain flowing of new ideas and new um, creative bursts and new fun and love and feelings and goodness and blah, coming out. You can't have that if you're looking at other people thinking like, well, you're not res respecting like what, what's coming out of them, what they're, okay. But if someone's attacking you with that energy, you can push back. You know, that's like that anal the example. Say, hey, 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 I respect that you are your own person and you are good at your core. Okay, but what, how you are affecting me right now, it does not feel good to me and I decide what happens in my space. Okay, and I don't want to move right now just because you're doing your thing. So, hey, I want to be with you. I, you know, I, I, I want to coexist with you. But if it ain't feeling right to me, which it's not right now, I'm going to let you know about it because that'll kind of give you an opportunity to maybe change that feedback, that direct honesty, like I always talk about, that will give you an opportunity to possibly make some changes because now that you know, right, you've come up against it. That's what it means to show up in a relationship, to be honest because everybody's just flowing. They're doing their thing. They're running their programs and then boom, when they come up against someone who speaks honesty, especially when it's in love and guess what? Direct honesty, regardless of what energy it's in. Okay, sometimes if it's agitated or whatever, direct honesty, if it's truth, if it is what is true for you right here, right now, it is love. 
And see, it brings us back to that question of who decides what love is. Because if you say to someone like, I hate, oh, when you talk to me that way, when you talk to me with that tone, I hate it. You know, if someone said, well, is that love? Who is the judge? You are. And if that's what feels right to you, and really what that energy of like exacerbation, you know, like, ugh, exhaustion, just so annoyance, it's because you've been holding it, you've been harboring it. So it's like, oh, I gotta get this off my chest. And I gotta say it, and it doesn't sound loving right now, but it's what's true for me right now. And guess what? The more I talk and the more I share my truth and the more I'm directly honest and, you know, you know, and then it gets other people's energies off of us. It kind of gets people to back up. Just like if there was a group of people holding you down. Imagine this, you're held down against your will. A group of people holding you down. And if you were saying like, hey, um, hey, you know, I kind of don't like this. And maybe they're not making a change at all. Then you realize, I really don't want this. I want to get up. I want to go. Um, I don't know what I want to do, but I don't want this. You say, hey, guys, um, could you get off me? And they just keep doing it. So do you feel, with, feel this with me? What anger, all anger is, all that energy of like, ugh. All it is, is it's like, there's part of me that I've been holding back. There's part of me that's get, that feels like it's been getting held back. And I'm not gonna judge whether someone's holding me back or whether I'm holding myself back or whatever. All I know is in this particular area right now, this energy, I'm feeling held down. I don't know if it's my fault or your fault, but in our analogy, of course, it's, it's somebody else's fault because they're holding us down. So you say, you gotta protect yourself. You gotta take care of yourself. You're not just gonna lay there and let them do that. So pretty soon you say, hey, you start to fight. You start to push. You start to use everything that you've got in you to change your circumstances. You say, get off me. Get off me now. Get off me and you fight. Okay, so that what people call anger, they say that's not loving. We live in a society right now. It's like, oh, someone's angry? No, no, we need to do away with that. We need to get anger out and you get anger out by like, being angry at it and judging it. <laughs> but like the Bible says, anger begets anger. Okay, so when you judge anger, oh, you can't be angry, no, no, no. It's just always gonna make it, when someone feels wrong, it's gonna make it bigger. Because yeah, when people feel wronged, you know, I think of the black culture, they, you know, African-Americans, like they got brought over against their will, like getting beaten down, taken from their families, taken from their tribes. It's so wrong, brought over in these ships, chained down, treated like, I see, I can't even think of a thing that would, would like, as an analogy, because nothing should be treated like that. Even the word scum, it just means like something that's like built up at the bottom of like the sink, you know, like the soap scum. And I don't, and that doesn't even get treated that way. Nothing in the planet that I live on and that I am building for myself, my own experience, deserves to be treated like that. And so of course there's gonna be anger in the um, people who've come from that background. You know, pick any group of people who had another one overtake them physically and, and hold them down and remove their freedom, restrict their freedom. <laughs> Okay, so I went into that energy and, ah, and some of you might be like, woo, because it feels powerful. Because guess what? Anger represents our power to get our freedom back. But once our freedom comes back, then guess what? Ah, oh, now we can exist like the lion who's just lying around in the sun, just relaxing, you know, doing whatever he wants to do because when you're free, you're loose and you're relaxed. Okay, but if you're feeling wrong and you're feeling like you've got anger, well, it's because you are. You're angry. It's okay to be angry. It's so valid to be angry. And you can choose how you deal with it. You can release it different ways. Sure, I'm not advocating like hitting anyone unless you, they're, they're encroaching on you. you know, so that's what self-defense is. It's like, I don't want to use force at all, but if you start to hold me back, you start to tread on me, you know that old um, phrase that kind of like the, represents the essence of the libertarian political mindset, which is like, don't tread on me. You know, I'm going to do my thing. You do your thing and we'll coexist, but if you start to come over and like, you know, get on me and, and, and disrupt my freedom, then I'm not just gonna cower back and I'm not gonna withhold and I'm not gonna bottle up and just kinda let you do that. I'm gonna say, hey, hey, no, 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 no. This doesn't feel right, okay? We live in a society that acts as though there's like someone who knows what's right and what's wrong and there's like this, there's this like this one right or wrong. But each person gets to decide what's right for them, what's wrong for them, what love is for them, and what's not. So we own that and when we live from it, 
guess what? We become love. So welcome to the tribe.